race car is off the racetrack. We're about to kick off the 2009 ARCA Remax Series season. Green flag in the air. We're underway. Up through the gears, Justin Lofton looks like he got a good start. Alley Owens on the outside. With these restricted engines, it's going to take about a lap, maybe even a lap and a half, to get these cars up to full speed. Off the corner right of your screen, it looked like he made a little bit of contact with the wall. Coming off turn number turn number four. Not sure who that was, but it looked like he slid up just well, maybe brushed the outside the, wall. The car behind him did a good heads up too and shot the gap on the inside. I know there wasn't much room, but he did shoot the gap good. There's Frank Kimmel on the inside of that 20. Ooh, a little smoke, smoke out, out of that car. Smoke coming out of the 44 of Kimmel. Watch this replay. Watch that right there now. Watch that 20 car. That's the car that got up against the wall. As you mentioned, the guy. Ooh. That's that's probably where that smoke's coming from for yeah. Frank Kimmel. He Ain't probably down. has a tire rub right yeah. now. Right rear. Welcome back. Safety crews attending to some of the drivers that were involved in our first incident here of the 2009 season from Daytona International Speedway. Watch Peyton sell is that 47 car right there. He goes to the outside. Gets a little bit loose. It looks like the tires are up, doesn't I, I doesn't thought the, the right sides were up and left. I believe he just got loose. Got a little bit loose there. And we're watching this. Meanwhile, at, you know, right after this happened, he does a nice job letting that car, not letting that car go all the way up to the outside wall. There's another view of Peyton's car. He had a little car. He had Steve Arp in the 20 car right behind him. You see a lot of guys did a nice job moving to the outside of that right. car to avoid Peyton. And then you can see the smoke left of your screen. The caution flag was probably out. And somebody more than likely probably checked up. What little Oh no! There was a contact right there. The 11 into the back of the one. Brian Silas in, uh, in the 11 and the one of Tom Hessert made contact, and that's what started this situation. That happened so early off of turn four, they may not even have had time to see the caution flag, Kenny. Welcome back. It might be the kiss of death for us to go to caution break or to break because a caution comes out a big one once again at Daytona in the Arca Remax series. It really started in the middle of three and four, but then it continued on down all the way out of turn number four. We see Ken Weaver with some damage. Let's take another look. That's Eddie Mercer, the 51. He may make contact. Looks like they almost got tied up. It looked like he didn't make contact initially, and then it maybe got Alley out of the throttle a little bit, Kenny. Yeah, it uh, it was real close. I mean, whether he did or not, but they just kept wrecking. You can see the sun there too isn't helping him at all. Yeah. See Bill Baird sliding, but there was no contact for Bill Baird until later on here. And then the 99 made contact with the 44 Frank Kimmel. Alley spins back up into the racetrack. Steve Arpin runs into her. Now one Watch of the cars it. trying to that, continue. That, and Benny Chastain in the 75, he actually bounces off two other cars and then hits the 45 as well. So looks like Benny got three. So again, quite a few cars involved. Let's ride along. That's that's Frank right behind his nephew Will. Frank got hit. You, you could hear him get hit and turn him around. Looked like Will must have gotten through it without any incident. The guys that stayed out earlier on pit road, and sure enough, the line starts on the pit road. Let's go down to Jim Trader, who will be covering what takes place on pit road. Well, Joey Logano will have an open pit box behind him. After qualifying third, he had the choice of picking a pit stall with a spot behind him. Billy Venerini on the box. The entire Joe Gibbs racing crew for the cup team is on the over the pit wall. They're going to change four tires. Joey Logano overshoots his pit now. He's backing up again very hard on the brakes here. They don't use a lot of brakes, so he took a while to slow down. They're going to do a, a slight chassis adjustment on the right rear. One round in, and they're getting the right sides off. A slower stop than expected for Logano. Wendy. Brian Scott is in for four tires air pressure adjustment. Crew chief Ken Rucker said he's going to look at that right front tire when it comes off to see if they have to stop again. He has been a little tight. Justin Lofton also passing his pit when he stopped on pit road. They had to back it up. Fortunately, Bobby Gearhart had gotten out of the way. Justin Lofton really turning the wheels through the corner, also a little bit tight. His crew chief, Mark Rett, had radio communications most of this race. They said, Justin, if you win this race, we promise we'll buy new radios. <laughs> well, I'll tell you right now. You need new brakes right now. Gonna, yeah, he's going to need a lot more now because they did not win the race off of pit road. And so Justin Lofton is no longer the leader of our race here at Daytona International Speedway. We'll be right back. There he came he's out. Right, right there. 
and he absolutely came across pit wall and that is unknown. He actually didn't come across pit wall because the opening was behind the car, but he was definitely on pit road and that will necessitate a one lap penalty for Joey Logano in that 25 car. And you can see the Arca Remax officials right now holding that car on pit road as the field goes by. Well, cars are moving around quite a bit. I was going to say, really things are, are yeah. heating up already. Whoa. Another problem in turns three and four. The 51. Oh, that's Mercer. Eddie Mercer involved in it. The 29. Matt Carter, Matt Carter Mikey Kyle. Also involved. Ryan Fisher in that 50. Oh. oh, no. And then the 28 runs right into the back of them. Chris Cockrum. 99, John down. Ferrier also involved. You see the eight, Brian Scott, Ali. Gabby DiCarlo. Gabby DiCarlo in the, DiCarlo 90. In the yep. 90. Yeah, in the great clips car. You know, that, we're that getting started down. right up front. Sure did. We, as you were talking, Kenny, it, it, it doesn't matter where you are. You can get caught up in something here. You don't have to be at the back of the pack. Green flag back in the air. They're all chasing James Busher. Patrick Shelter runs second. Justin Lofton is third. Joey Logano fourth. And John West Townley is fifth. Our nine time champion, Frank Kimmel, running sixth. Ken Weaver is seventh. Larry Hollenbach eighth. Daryl Basham is ninth. And John Ferrier is tenth. Well, those guys jumped up, jumped around Patrick Shelter and shoveled him out a little bit. Now he's back to the fourth spot. That moved Justin Lofton and Joey Logano up to second, third. Now we've got Toyotas. Three One, Toyotas. two, three. Yep, up in front. That was definitely time to make that move. The way way easier time to pass is right on the restart, isn't yeah. it, Kenny? Oh, if, if you can't pass them, pass them before they get going fast, how are you going to try to pass them later? Justin Lofton goes high on the racetrack, and now Joey Logano makes the pass, moves into second. Here comes Patrick Sheltra trying to hold on to third. Six laps of racing to go. They cross the start finish line. James Busher trying to hold off the 25 of Joey Logano. Patrick Sheltra back up to the third spot. Then right behind him, Justin Lofton started on the pole today. He's running fourth. And John West Townley rounding out our top five. Remember, three of these of the four guys running up front have had wins in the Arca Remax series. James Busher, actually the very youngest winner we ever had back at Lakeland, Florida a couple years ago. Look at the momentum Joey Logano got with that run on the outside. He laid off him to get a little bit of momentum, and boy, he got it, didn't he, Kenny? Yes, he did. Oh, oh trouble. Justin Lofton into the back of the 60. Patrick Shelton spins. Into the wall he goes. And now Kimball spins around. Oh, the big hit on Justin, or on the 60 of Patrick Shelton. Our sixth caution of the day comes out, and what a big hit that was from the 23 of Larry Hollenbeck. Green and white in the air. One lap of racing to go for the Arca Remax Series opener. He's already got too much of a gap right now. Joey Logano, I think, with a little help from Justin Lofton, will have some momentum when they get off turn number two. Going through one and two now. Justin Lofton behind the 25 of Joey Logano. Way out in front now. Jay, it's James Busher. He's got a three-car lead as they go down the back stretch. They should get some momentum here. They're all tucked up behind each other now. They're not gaining as quick as I would have thought they would have. But John here they West come. Townley on the outside in that 09. Here comes the 25 of Joe Logano. Up the racetrack goes the 32 of James Busher. He's making that car as wide as he possibly can as they work their way through four and out into the trioval. James Busher is able is going to be able to do it Rick. James Busher trying to hold on. Will he do it? He'll win it. 2009.